Hello traders, my name is Ray, better known as Samurai Trader and I love day trading. My job is to teach you how to day trade the world's best day trading strategies no matter which market you trade, futures, forex or stocks. Before we get started, please ensure that you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the little red button below or wherever, wherever it is <laughs> to make sure that you keep up to date with my most recent videos on how to day trade your way to financial freedom. Also, as we get underway, please feel free to take notes. Pause the video if you need to write something down. Because remember, just that one idea may make a massive difference to your trading. And as always, traders, my videos are raw, real, and unedited. So if I ever slip up every now and then on something I might say or how I say it, please excuse me. So let's get down to business. In today's session, we're going to be covering how to day trade the MES, the micro ES contract. Now I do need to pull up the disclaimer as we do get underway that there is a risk in trading and uh, of course what you can do is pause the recording to read the disclaimer. I don't think you really want me to read all of that on you and just remember um, and don't forget this, all of the ideas and strategies and techniques that I cover in this video you can apply to all markets whether you trade uh, futures, forex, stocks or options. So please remember that. Now, what is really important with any market that we trade is the volume of the market. So this is a snapshot from my radar screen of just one of the days, uh, of one random day. And on this day, and as you know today, we're going to be focusing on the micro ES. So that's column number four. So we can see here on this particular day, that turned over 1.25 million contracts. Now, it was perhaps above average. Normally we would see around at recent times uh, about 750 to 800,000 contracts. And on the big contract, the ES, it turned over 1.9 million contracts where normally you'd see about one and a half million. So the first qualification for us is we've got great volume which means we're going to get really good volatility, generally speaking. Now, just below it here, you can see the micro NQ. Now, the micro NQ turned over almost as many contracts. And also, if you look at the big contract, we see that with the micro NQ, we actually have a higher volume of contracts turning over, unlike the micro ES. But one of the advantages with the micro, micro ES is really, it, it's it's a little bit slower and more stable than the micro NQ at times, where the NQ can be very, very whippy. However, on both of them, there's still some great trading opportunities. Now, what we also have to consider now is the type of chart that we're going to trade. That is, I wanna show you how to trade this market. Now, the type of charts that we're gonna be looking at today is Renko. Uh, and in the very next recording, we're going to be looking at tick charts. So as we know, there's a range of different types of charts that we can use. Time-based, tick, volume, range and Renko, Heikinashi, to name a few. So my preference is really is tick and Renko. I do love range as well. Heikinashi is great as well. I mean, it's, it's really a matter of settling down on a chart type that you prefer. And one of the reasons I love Renko is it really smooths out the price action. And when you're trading the micros, because of a tick value, uh, it works really well. So talking about tick value, so on the micro ES, the tick value is $1.25 per tick and it trades in one point increments. So there are four ticks to a point. So $5 a point. Now, if we look at say the uh, the Russell, 50 cents a tick, the NASDAQ, 50 cents a tick, and the micro uh, YM is also 50 cents a tick. So it's a dollar 25 a tick. Now, a lot of traders have a misconception that it's a lot harder to really make money trading the micro, where in fact, the, the micros are a great way to actually kickstart your trading career because you can start with a much smaller account and build it, then eventually go across to trading the uh, larger contracts. 
And particularly if you say trading the range charts or the, uh, the say the Renko charts, you're going to have exactly the same volatility or price movement, range movements as if you would on the big contract. So let me just show you this quickly. So let's just say here, you're gonna trade the two largest volume micros, which is the NQ and the ES. And say if you've got a $1,700 account. Now I know with some brokers, you can start off with a smaller account, but what you've got to remember traders, we wanna stay within the maximum risk of 2% of our account value. That's absolutely critical that we do that. So therefore, with a $1,700 account, we could have a stop loss of up to $35, sorry, 34, let me get it right here, the math right, $34 to stay within the risk management rule. Now you're gonna see in a moment that we stay well within that, but you just gotta be cautious of that. Now just by netting $50 a day, just 50 a day, and I'm gonna show you how we do that in a moment, you've got the potential of earning up to 10,000 a week in only 30 weeks. And how it works very quickly is this, every time you double your account, that is you get another 1,700 in your account, you start trading an additional contract. So this is a very conservative way of building your account. And so as we can see here, our account keeps building, we go up to four contracts and we go to five, the six, the seven. Then we're over here, you can see this and say, well, hang on, Samurai, what a hundred contracts? Do we really wanna be trading a hundred micros? No, you'd be trading 10 big lots. You'd have 182,000 in your account and you'd be trading the large contracts. So once you get to 10 micros, that's when you might start considering uh, going to a large contract, okay? Because based upon the stop loss that we're going to be using, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, you'd need to have, if you're trading the big contract, a $17,000 account. Money management is critical, and this is where so many traders get it wrong. But think about this, traders. 1,700 giving you an income potential of 10,000 a week by only earning $50 a day per lot, only 50. So the young guns, or those that um, are great day traders already, or those that are really willing to put the hours in, what about if we went for just $75? If we increased that a little, I should say. Uh, I won't even go above that. We can see here, we've got up to this potential within 19 weeks, and by week 50, we've got over a million dollars in our account and earning 37,500 uh, a week. Now this is on the basis of $75. Now remembering today, we are focusing on the micro ES. Okay, so we are going to go to the charts because I wanna do some right-hand chart reading with you. I wanna show you what you must learn to do this. Now you're going to hear me talk about stops and targets. So with the micro ES, today in today's session, we're going to be looking at the four tick Renko, one point. Okay, that's worth $5 a point. Now, if you were trading the big contract, that would mean it's $50 a point. Now, typically when we're scalping the big contract, we'd be scalping with say a two tick chart rather than four. One of the advantages of using the higher time frame is it's slower, generally speaking, and for a trader that's perhaps new or one that's been struggling, and even those that are doing really well, it just gives you more time to react and place your trades. And you've also got much greater volume because you've got more traders when you're trading a, a higher um, tick value chart. Now, let's talk about the risk. With what you're about to see, you'll see that I've got a white paint bar. Uh, and, and by the way, just on the side, this is not meant to be an advertisement here, but if you become a member of the Day Traders Fast Track program, you get the, all of my indicators. And so you get the white paint bar anyway. We call that the T1, the super scalper. Now I'll show you this on the chart, but your risk, that is by putting your stop under the little swing low or swing high is $17.50. If you enter a trade using what I call a rule of one, your risk is only 12.50. Now, ideally, we wanna be bringing at least three to four 10-step 
trades a day and I'll show you what a step is. So if you go for five steps, it's 12.50. Now typically on the micros, you're gonna be paying around a dollar. Let me just round it off at a dollar per trade in commissions. So there to make 50, you'd need realistically five winning trades. And we'll just have a look and see how that goes. But the, the, the more steps that we make, the larger the target, the easier it is to achieve. Now when we get down here, we go for a larger uh, Renko brick. I call them candles to keep it simple, but say Renko brick. So we can see that down here. Uh, our risk would be $25. But let's focus on this, okay? So we wanna be bringing in per trade between four steps and 10 steps minimum. Remember our risk is 17.50? Just one moment, traders. Sorry, I have to cough. You didn't wanna hear me coughing away there. So uh, just here, uh, our risk is 17.50, seven steps, Add in your commission, you wanna get in, you wanna average realistically between seven and eight steps. Now, what I'm about to show you is fantastic for, uh, for scalpers and day traders. We approach it differently for swing trading. Now, the next thing we need to consider are the margin requirements. Now, if we look at TradeStation, uh, and let me just get the trade station here. Here we go. So trade station here on the big contract at the moment. And so I'm recording this uh, on the 6th of October, 2020. And we've got the election, of course, a month away. And so, uh, and we've had a lot of volatility because of um, COVID this year. So the margins are, are really way up there. But if you look at the micro ES, which is of course what we're looking at right now, the, the margin requirement is only $1,320. Now there is a margin there, and a day trading rate, whereby that's, uh, what's that between? Uh, 8.30 I think it is, uh, Eastern, and 4 p.m. Eastern, where you only require 25% of that amount. However, don't forget the 2% rule. You might have a risk there of 17.50 to 25, maybe $30 at times. So therefore you need to be allowing more in your account, a greater amount in your account. So the micro is a great way to kick, kick off your day trading career and to build. Every time you double your account, you start trading an additional contract. It's a great way of building discipline uh, and gaining confidence as a trader. Now, uh, let's see, margin requirements, that was it there. So let's now uh, go to the right hand side of the screen because what I want to teach you traders is how you actually trade from the right hand side. Anyone can go back and mark up a chart. That's easy to do, right? Mark up a chart that's already plotted. But it's, there's a skill set and a set of rules that we use for actually selecting the trades. And I wanna give you a really good idea of how to start to do this. Now also it's critical that you gain practice. That is, I can give you the world's best setup. So I've been doing this now for 27 years. Uh, and I've trained with some of the best traders. I've got, you name the course, I've probably got it. Most of you know I used to own a traders library. So I've got, you name it, I've got it, okay? Um, but the, so I can give you the, the, the best courses and the best systems and strategies and setups, but what I can't give you is screen time. And so it's absolutely critical that you get that screen time in. And there's Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell, who wrote the excellent book, uh, Blink, and a number of others. Uh, as he says here, practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing you do that makes you good. And this is where so many traders um, fall over. So let me just now pull up a chart. Now what we're, uh, let's just go to this here and let me just give you a general overview. So traders, what we've got here of course is the Renko one point. And you'll see here in the one window, I've actually got three charts. Now on the left here, I've got what I call my EC, my entry chart. Then I've got my AC1, my anchor chart one, and then I've got my anchor chart two. If you're a brand new trader, 
having three charts up may be a little confusing. Over a period of time as you develop the skill set, you really want to learn a three higher time, oh sorry, having two higher time frames, I should say. You can start off with two. Now, what we want to be doing is trading in the direction of the higher time frame. Okay, so we, we're looking for our entries on our entry chart, but trading in the direction of the AC1 and AC2. So we're looking for retracements and pullbacks. Now I really want to focus on those, but if I see a good divergence trade set up, I'll, I'll let you know as well um, and show you how to trade that. But let's just look at this here. So this is actually during the Globex session. So this is central standard time. You can see at the bottom of the screen here traders. So that's central standard time. And so this back here is what we call A2B. I've got a pullback and notice over here, uh, I've got a pullback and this is exactly what you would see at the time. So if I went across there, let me just show you this. This is what you would actually see setting up. Now what you'll notice is, is the EMAs that I'm working in, they all, they all just fit like fingers in a glove. They work beautifully together. And as we can see here that our overall downtrend, uh, our overall trend, sorry, on the anchor chart at the moment is down. I've got a 200 EMA here. And we can see here on the short time frame, I'm rallying to the long side. So what we're going to be aware here, traders, is that uh, we'd be expecting a turn any time. In fact, we call these T12s up here. See how you've bounced right up here? You actually had divergence. These are incredible trading opportunities when we get those. Now, can you trade against a higher time frame trend? Absolutely, but what you want to notice is this. See the distance between my entry and the 200. I've got plenty of room there to make a profit before I'd expect, and let's just wait here right there, a reversal, okay? Now, when we're trading Renko and tick charts are the same, we have what we call get ready, get set, go. That is, we're waiting for three things to happen. Now, forget you can see the white paint bar for a moment, just there. As we see price pull back, the first green candle you get is what we call get ready. Second green candle closes, that's get set. Third closes, that means go. And that's our paint bar just there. So what we're looking at is scalping. Now see these here, these are what we call steps. Now remember earlier I said we wanna be going for at least seven to eight steps. Now in this market, seven steps is 17.50. Each one of these steps here is worth $2.50. So if we go up eight steps, so our entry's on the close, and let's just say we've got slippage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's $20 in that one move. So we're after realistically between three and four net of those. So we won't talk about all of these for now because um, I want to really get back and show you um, from the right-hand screen in a moment. Now, what I do want to point out here is this. Notice that there. Now, traditionally, we'd look at that and say, okay, we've got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of divergence here, but what I want you to notice here, traders, is what's happening on your higher time frame. See that there? See, from there to there, we've got divergence. You've got divergence rolling over and we're bouncing off the EMA here, the 200. That is what we call a 2B, or uh, sorry, a T12 and a 2B on the two high time frames. And right here, this is where you consider going for the home runs, okay, when you get those. And you can see here, you easily get uh, what we call 20 steps in that move. Now that move there, that's worth $50 plus in that one move. So when we get a major bounce on a higher time frame, it's home run time. Notice also this here is right there, we're trading with the trend. So what at times looks like a with trend trade is actually a counter trend trade uh, on the higher time frame. So 
as we come down, so let's, um, uh, what we'll do, so uh, let's go to the right-hand side, I'll tell you what, let's, let's go to the right-hand side and we'll just, let me just start from here because I do want to point this out. So first of all, right there, you can see we're going to a bit of chop. Now our entries, our, our really, the easiest entries to take would be there, you might have taken that one, you would have had a loss, that one, that's a loss, okay, uh, that's a break even, and that one there is a nice winner as well, because if you had a seen on the higher time frame, we were heading down. Now, you did have one, two, uh, you had two losses on the way, that's trading. And that is where you've got to learn to think and believe and understand the law of probabilities. Individual trades don't matter. You've, you must learn and you'll see this and hear me talk about this in my courses and in, in other videos where I talk about the law of probabilities. We don't count one loss. We think in, in trade lots of 20. Now, Let's just start from this here. So I won't pull up the anchor charts because I want to show you exactly how you start to learn to trade from the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so now we're in a downtrend. So as we're coming down, to get a retracement, notice here our EMAs. Now this is what we call a fanning of your moving averages. That usually means you've got a breakout. Now we won't talk about the pivot levels in this session, so you can see here we had a pivot bounce and you got a pivot there. So as we come down, I'm now gonna wait for a pullback to my EMAs. So I wanna pull back to the EMAs to get a short trade, that is to be trading with the trend. Now the first green candle, in fact you'll see a white candle, but that white candle did not appear until I had an uptick above the second candle, okay? So I had at least two green candles, and the third one, as soon as it had an uptick, it can tick back down again, my white paint bar, I call it the super scalper, it gets me in very early, it gets me into some great moves. Now, as soon as you saw that, and if you don't have the super scalper, I've got the super scalper for basically, um, what have I got it for, MT4, New Trader 7, 8, Trade Station, think or swim, if you don't have it, it's a simple pattern that I teach you. Now, as soon as you get the first green one, it's get set, get ready, get set, go. Now in this particular case, I've got no divergence here. I've got no reason to take this, this trade. Now what I'm now looking for is price to retrace back up to the moving averages, okay? Now, because the super scalp is on, you'll see the white paint bar, for, you'll see it there, but you'd see your first uh, red candle just there. That would be your first one. Now, we've also got a slingshot. We also call that a 34B, and you've got a rule of one. You've got multiple trade setups. Now, very important. When you become a member, or if you watch my videos, uh, it's so important traders that you focus, and I have all my members and coaching clients just focus on two setups to begin with, a 34B and another one called the 2B, both easy to learn trend following strategies. You start from there and build. There's a ton of different setups I can teach you, but you start with the two main ones. Now you can enter your 34B slingshot right there now if you want, on that first red candle. However, if you want to be conservative, you're waiting for three lower closes, which you now have right there. Now remember traders, we're after a bare minimum of five steps. So five steps is five of those down. Now that's only 1250. It's not going to cover your 1850. That is your risk is 1750 plus a dollar in commissions. All right, so the best thing there is, is to go for eight steps. So let's just see how we go. Remember, eight steps is $20. So we're at break even. So one, two, three, four, five. Oops, we've only got the five here. Uh, we're back to five, six. Whoops, it's, we've come down on six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now that's $25 in that one move. Now, this is where when you get 
and you start to see this sort of trend forming, now we're starting to look for divergence. And this is where the anchor charts come in. Because when you have a divergence on your higher time frames, it's much more powerful. But let me just keep this easy today. All right, so what I've got here, right here is what we call a T19. Now, I can already tell you now, almost certainly I've got some form of divergence on my anchor charts as well. Uh, so I would be after my eight steps. I'm gonna be very, very quick with this because we're gonna run out of time. Okay, now see this little classic here. See that um, red candle there. Now that's your get ready. But as you can see, you weren't executed in the trade because you had to get ready and there was no get set because the next candle turned green. Now what I want you to notice here is look what's happening to my long-term stochastic. See that there? This here also, I'm about to take out, and I have taken out this swing high. And this is what we call the Dow theory setup. After a multiple uh, downtrend, even though you had some chop there, we've been in an extended three to four waves. So this is where we classically will have a change in trend direction. Now, I'm expecting a bounce either here or up here. And bang, we've got it right there. And that right there, traders, is what we call a 2BD. All right, they're a lower probability trade because we're taking out these highs, which usually means a change in market direction. And there we've got it right there. Now, for members watching this, you can see we've got a slingshot. What else is that? That is also what we call a T20-1. A T20-1. And by the way, this terminology you pick up, we have codes traders for different things. It just makes it easier, All right? All it is, is the first trade after a T20 is, is basically, let me just show you this it's very quickly. I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but um, I'll just show you this right here. When you'll see the black dot come up. Okay, so uh, we're, oops, the wrong one, but see that, oops, did I turn, uh, it's race, Frank, sorry, let me just, um, uh, quickly do this, let me get rid of that one, wrong one, and yes, that's the one I want, whoops, I will get this right, nothing like doing something live and you get it, muck it up, but this is going to do it, okay, now see this black dot, this black dot represents, and it always tells you when you see lots of black dots, you know you're in shock, see this here, this signifies uh, 50 CCI zero line crossover, we just automated it. And we've got a simpler way of recognizing it, but a lot of traders, they use a 50 CCI. And if you're above a zero line, you're looking for longs. If you're below, you're looking for shorts. A very simplistic explanation. A T20-1, so we call them T20s. The first trade after a T20, which is that we call a T20-1, and that's also a 34B, a fantastic trades. So, I'm going to call this as a long. Where's my target? See the floor pivot, provided we get through this. See the floor pivot up here? Okay, so this is this actual one is actually called a midline pivot. That's a 50% level in between pivot levels. It's the midline. So let's now travel up. So now we'd be in one, two, three, we're after eight, by the way, four, five, six, seven, Oops, it's a good eight, there we go, nine. Now we're coming up to the pivot and bang. Okay, so there we are now. We've now got uh, a pivot bounce. Note here, we've also got some divergence. So we are uh, clearly now in counter trend um, uh, space. So if you're gonna take this as CT trade, as a counter trend trade, just be aware when you get this market turn, and see how my EMAs have crossed, we usually get a bounce off the 89 down here. Okay, so if you were to short this, this is a counter trend move. New traders, you would not take this. You'd be trading with the trend. Okay, we're coming down, coming down, and coming down. Now note there, okay, see that green candle? That was profit taking, get ready, but it reversed. 
now we've got get ready again, get set, go. Now, as we are out of time, we've been going 30 minutes, let me go back to the anchor chart because what we've got here, traders, is what we call a classic ABC. In fact, that also was an ABC, but on the smaller time frame. So the ABC pattern is a very easy pattern to recognize once you understand clearly what you're looking for. This ain't rocket science, what I'm showing you traders. But let me now just go and pull up the anchor chart. Let's just go to anchor chart one. Now, that there, let me just pull this back, <coughs> excuse me, is that point right there. See that there? Here I said A, B, C, and look over at our anchor chart, A, B, C, and now look at that move. Now, that there is another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, you, and you go to the moon. Now, realistically though, once you get above five or six, you're not gonna give all of that back. In fact, when you start trading multiple contracts, you want the cash register to start to ring. That is, you wanna hear it ring. So that is why with a really high probability setup, such as the 34 Bs and the two Bs, where you should be getting a good 75 to 80% win-loss ratios, you, you wanna take if you say if you're trading two contracts, take one off at plus five, go for the runner on the second, get the cash register ringing. So there was a nice, uh, easy, to, uh, easy to trade ABC. So now as this comes up, and just quickly, I, so I may as well quickly show you this. Um, as we now head up, okay, see that there, that's what we call a rule of one. All right, that's also a slingshot. You've got additional trades on the way up, but here, when they're starting to have set up what we call angulation. See how price action is now moving out and away from the moving averages. Now, your first move is usually not the big one, okay? Uh, or is not the reverse point. And you can see here, we've got a little bit of divergence here, not much. Uh, so very, very important, we wanna go for the big divergence move. Look over at the anchor chart. Now, I wanna just show you that there. See how it's starting to roll over and look up there. See how we're bouncing off the pivot on the anchor chart? Let's just remember, this is our entry chart. We do all of our trading off here. So we're coming up, we're coming up, we're coming up. And that is a pivot bounce as well. So we're bouncing on the pivot. Now right there, I've got divergence. I've got it rolling over. I'm gonna short this. Now, when you've got divergence on the anchor chart one, and if we've got it on the anchor chart two, let's just see if we do have, let's just see what I've got here on the anchor chart two. Okay, have I got it there? Not really. Okay, we wanna go for a run down to the 89, okay? But we've got it on this one and on this one, okay? We come down and there it is there. Now, as we sign off and finish, I want you want to show you something else just here. Remember earlier, I mentioned about the T12 trade, where when you're bouncing off a higher time frame moving average in a direction of a trend. Remember that earlier I said we were against the trend and the overall trend was heading down. What I want you to notice is that right there. See on the anchor chart, on the anchor chart to the highest time frame, how we're bouncing right there, and we had our divergence here. That is what we call a home run trade. Is that's the one you want to go for, right? Okay, when you get well, <laughs> one of the many trades you want to go for. But look at that there, a good ten steps. Now, what will we do here, by the way? So let's just look at this realistically. Now, right there, when you've got your first setup after, okay, a major move like that, that's one of those ones that we call a 2BD. Many of those will fail. Why? It's profit taking. Now, then it comes down. Now, the second one, the second move is where we're interested, but look down here for a moment. 
let's see whether I also have divergence set up here. Uh, coming down, coming down, coming down, bang. Now look at that there. Do I want to take that? Absolutely. Number one, what's the trend bias? Look at your anchor charts. That's what you'd be looking at. The bias of a trend is to the long side on both of your ACs. On your entry chart, and not only that, but now I've also got what? Divergence in the direction of the trend. So traders, what I've covered with you here, whoops, that's not what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Let me just pull that back up. Um, so I've really given you and really uh, covered a great deal with you in this 30 minute session. Uh, so in our next session, we'll start to look at and we'll go through tick charts. So traders, we've covered a lot and it's about, and if you looked at this and go, holy dooly, I could never pick this up. Oh yes, you can. Okay, 20 or 30 hours of coaching, either my group coaching or going through my videos, this isn't rocket science. It's about learning how to read the fanning of the EMAs. Okay, see that there? This is what we're reading, the stacking of the EMAs. And it's certainly not rocket science. So, uh, so traders are uh, in our next session, we'll cover uh, how to trade the micro ES with tick charts. Now with the big contract, if you do trade the big contract, you can use exactly the same Renko sizes, but tick charts are different because we're using, they're based upon, of course, transactions. So tick is very different to Renko. And what I've shown you here, you can apply to any futures market, any Forex market or any stock market, as long as you've got uh, a trading range. So thank you for watching. Uh, traders, I love day trading. See you in the next video.